today is week six of our stretch and strengthen exercise series. There is a total of eight classes, so we're almost there. We're almost at the end. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Come get settled. Hopefully you can see me and hear me okay. Okay. So this is our stretch and strengthen exercise series. This is our low impact and low intensity exercise class. And uh, the way the class works is we start in a seated position, then we move to a standing position and then back down to a seated position again. And the point of the class is we do lots of amplitude work where we do um, lots of stretching, but strengthening as well. So it's quite a gentle class to start with if you're new to exercising or if you uh, are returning to exercise after a bit of a break. The class is recorded. So all of our previous classes have been uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Um, so if you go to youtube.com, you can search for Parkinson Society BC and then our YouTube channel will come up. And um, under the video section or the playlist section, you can see the stretch and strength and exercise classes recorded on there. Now, if you are new to our Parkinson Society exercise classes, do know that we have lots and lots of different ones um, and they tend to rotate every month or every second month. And so if you're looking for more classes in the future, please do keep an eye out on our website or um, if you want to join our mailing list, we send out a weekly digest email with all of our classes. And um, it's not just exercise classes, but we have activity classes like singing and drumming. Um, and we also have our educational webinars as well. So a new class has just been posted for March and um, that one is our uh, move and groove to the music class, which is by a new instructor. So um, it's quite, quite exciting that we're gonna be hosting this uh, new exercise series. So please do sign up for that if you're interested. And we have more classes coming out for the rest of spring, summer and the year end as well. I think most people have joined in. Hello, everybody. I do see some new names today. So if you are new to our exercise class, please follow along. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to use the chat box to um, type your question or equally, you're welcome to use the raise hand function and then I can disable or sorry, enable your microphone so you can ask the question over voice as well. So because we are in the Zoom webinar platform, everybody's microphones are automatically disabled just because the classes tend to be um, a little larger in the webinar platform. And I wanna make sure that um, we don't have any feedback kind of looping through the class as we go along. So if you did want to speak, you're welcome to use the raise hand function. Okay, I think that's it for me. So let's get started. I'm going to move back to my chair. Whoops, just realized I've still got my socks on. I'm gonna take these off because I don't want to slip in the class. Okay, we're starting in our chairs. Hopefully you've got a chair that's nice and sturdy. Ideally, no wheels at the bottom. You want it to be nice and flat just so the chair doesn't roll away from you as we get moving today. And um, we do prefer to have chairs without armrests just so that way when we're moving about, you won't actually hit your arms on anything, but of course, if you only have a chair with armrests, that's okay as well. Just be a little mindful as we get moving today that you don't hurt yourself. Okay, so we're gonna start in our chair and we're gonna start by sitting up nice and tall, moving to the front of our chair. I'm gonna turn sideways for a second. So when we're doing our seated portion of the class, it's really important that we're always sitting nice and tall and at the front of our chair. Because if we're back here and we're leaning back, we're leaning into the side, it's gonna be very difficult for us to move because everything is just so far back and we're not really actively engaging anything. So it's important that we sit upright and we get our weights directly over our hips, but we also move to the front of our seat because once we're at the front, there's more room to kind of move your legs whereas if you're back here there's a lot of friction and, and and it's very difficult to move your legs 
And so when we're talking about sitting today, we're always assuming we're in a nice upright position like this at the front of the seat. Okay, I'm gonna turn back around. So we're sitting nice and tall at the front of our seat. We're going to lace those fingers together and we're gonna reach the palms up towards the ceiling. Big stretch as far as you can, like someone's pulling your arms up towards the ceiling. And then you're gonna take the stretch a little further over to one corner and up again over to the other corner. Back up again. And then we're going to circle the wrist all the way down. And we're gonna repeat that again. Now, if you've got shoulder problems and you're not able to reach all the way up, that's okay. You can go a little bit less of a range, but I still want you to do the rotation here. You're still kind of doing that up and over motion, even if your arms are a little bit lower. Big stretch, almost like you're pulling your rib cage away from the rest of your body. And to the other side. Back to the middle. And then we're going to circle our wrists all the way down. Let's do one more. Big reach all the way up, big stretch, extending your torso away from your hips. And then taking that over onto a diagonal. Back up to the middle, big reach over to the other diagonal. Big reach. And we'll circle the wrist all the way back down. We're gonna float the arms up in front of us, palms together. From here, we're going to open our arms back and we're going to twist our body. We're rotating our body to the back wall and then forward again, same to the other side, open, rotating our body to the back wall. And middle, again, rotating to the back wall. Hopefully your room is a little bit more wide than mine. Mine is a little narrow and so I'm kind of hitting my wall here, but ideally you want the arms to go back even further if you can. So really let your gaze follow, let your eyes follow the direction of where, <clears throat> where your hand is going. And hopefully you're still sitting up nice and tall. We're not starting to do this and, and slouch the shoulders are away from our ears. You're twisting, you're twisting your spine on the spot, kind of like a corkscrew. So we're not bending over to the side, but we're sitting up tall and twisting on the spot. And we're gonna drop the arms for a second, bring them back up. So the hands are sort of behind the ears, behind the temples, fingers nice and open, nice and loose. We're gonna sit up nice and tall, and then we're gonna crunch down to the side as if we're trying to reach our elbow towards our hip, except we're not actually gonna take the arm away from the ears. So the arms are gonna stay attached, our fingertips are staying touching the ear, but we're kind of reaching, we're, we're crunching down to the side and trying to aim for the tip of our elbow to go towards the outside of our hip. And then we're coming back up, same to the other side, crunching to the side, almost like you're trying to bring your elbow to touch your hip, but our fingers stay attached to our ears. And we're gonna repeat that. And as we're doing this, it's really important that we're not kind of twisting forward. Try to keep your chest open to the front if you can. So it's almost like you're stuck in between two glass panels and you're kind of just gliding to either side. We're not bending forward, we're not bending back. We're staying on the spot and we're just kind of curving to either side. Keep the feet nice and flat on the floor. Your legs still, hopefully we're not moving our legs or twisting them to either side. And always return to upright position in the center every time. Good, nicely done. Let's do a few more. Hopefully you're breathing through this. We're not holding our breath. Keep your chest facing forward. And we're gonna drop the arms. We're gonna take our hand and we're going to reach the opposite knee. And our other hand is gonna wrap around the back of the chair. So you're holding onto the chair. You're sitting up tall and you're going to twist yourself around, pull yourself around into a rotational stretch where you're looking at the back wall and you're still sitting up nice and tall like a corkscrew. So we're not, we're not kind of twisting over to the side. We're keeping our weight on top of our pelvis here. 
we're kind of twisting on the spot. And let's release, sink to the other side, take your hand, hold on to the opposite knee, other hand wrapping around the back of the seat, nice and tall. And you're gonna pull yourself around into a rotational stretch. Just like before, we're thinking about that corkscrew, we're kind of twisting on ourselves. And we're not going to lean over to the side. And release, nicely done everybody, okay. We're going to start warming up those legs. We're gonna start by doing 10 marches on the spot like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then we're gonna follow that with 10 legs forward like this and punching. One, two, opposite arm to leg, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then we're gonna go back to our marching on the spot, 10 of them, then the kicks, 10 of them. We're gonna keep repeating that. So join me here. We're doing 10, nine, eight, swing the arms, six, five, four, three, two, one, kick and punch for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Back to our marching. Make sure we're swinging the arms. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ten kicks and punches for ten, nine. Sit tall. Nicely done. Six, five, four, three, two. One, one more time back to the marching. Make sure you're swinging those arms back just as much as you are going forward. Four more, four, three, two, one. Kicking punches for 10 of them. For 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And rest it up nice and tall. Hands either on your hips or you can hold on to the side of your chair, whatever feels nicer for you. We're gonna sit up nice and tall. So remember, we're not sitting back here. We're not slouching. If your posture has changed from the beginning, try to correct that. Sit up nice and tall and make sure you're still at the front of the seat. We're gonna go for ankles now. So we're gonna sit up nice and tall. Imagine there's a book bouncing on your head. And we're going to warm up those ankles. We're going to lift the heels up as high as we can. Then we're going to lift the toes up as high as we can. And as we're doing this, you'll notice that if, if you're looking at me from the hips up, my body's not moving at all. I'm kind of like a statue from the waist up. And it's only those uh, ankles moving. And in turn, because the ankles are moving, the legs are moving. The rest of the body is nice and still. So see if you can try to embody that. We're gonna avoid this kind of movement where our body's kind of twisting with every leg movement. And uh, I'm, I'm exaggerating there. I'm sure nobody's actually doing it like that. But we wanna try to dissociate the movement from our lower body to our upper body. We're staying nice and still, nice and controlled in the upper body as we're doing this. Shoulders away from the ears. Really take the opportunity here to warm up those ankles. And then we're going to do the same thing, but now with off position. So we're gonna go one heel up, one toe up, or one side of the toes up. Then you switch heels up, toes up, heels up, toes up, heels up, toes up. So if I turn sideways for a second, or on a diagonal, so you can see it looks like this. You can see one foot, heel up, the other one, toes up, and then you switch. So we're gonna keep doing this, we're gonna do the switch. And as we're doing that, just like before, we want to avoid the legs kind of shaking in and out. So we want to avoid the body kind of being taken away with this movement. We want to sit up nice and tall. You're still keeping your center of gravity on top of your base of support. In this case, your pelvis, your hips. And we're sitting up nice and tall, shoulders away from the ears. Imagine you've got that book bouncing on your head. Nicely done. Let's do another six, five, four, 
three, two, one, and press. You can lower those arms. Okay, I'm gonna switch back in my seat just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna turn sideways so I can show you. Okay, so a moment ago, we were sitting at the front of our seat. We're going to just sit back a tiny bit, a tiny, tiny bit. Still not touching the back of our seat. So you can see how far away I am from the back forward in the seat, but sort of more in the middle. And I'm sitting up nice and tall. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to incline my body forward just a little bit. So I'm going to bend from the hips, keeping my back as tall as possible. I'm going to lean forward just a little bit. And this movement is very different from this, right? I'm not curling my spine down. I'm keeping my spine nice and long. And I'm just pinching forward at the hips, just a little bit, not a lot. And we're going to float those arms up in front of us like so, fingers wide. And we're going to squeeze our shoulder blades together and pull the elbows back, almost like we're trying to elbow someone behind us. And then we bring the arms forward again, pulling those elbows back, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then bring them forward. So if I go this way a little bit so you can see, I'm pulling the elbows back, squeezing my shoulder blades together, and then I bring the arms forward. And you'll notice that my arms are nice and wide. My elbows are not down here. I'm keeping them wide. So wide elbows, like you're elbowing someone behind you. Shoulders away from the ears, or so not like this. Shoulders away from the ears. Nice long spine if you can. Make sure you're breathing, not holding your breath. Nicely done, everybody. Let's go for 10. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one, and relax. Okay, we're going to shuffle our bottom to the front of our chair again. And now we're going to practice our sit to stand so we can move into a standing position. Now, if you are new today, it's really important that when we are doing our sit to stand, that we're starting at the front of our seat and we're not starting back here. Because one of the common mistakes we make when we try to do the sit to stand that makes the sit to stand harder than it needs to be is we're often sitting quite far back like this. And so what's happening is if I try to stand up from this position, it's very tough because my weight is too far back behind my base of support. So my base of support in this case, my feet, because I'm about to stand up. But if my weight is back here, I'm, I'm needing to use a lot of effort to try to uh, walk my weight forward and then pull my weight over my base of support to stand. So it's not a very efficient way to stand. And so we want to be sitting upright, moving to the front of the seat so you can see automatically my center of gravity doesn't have too far to go in order to get on top of my base of support. And then from here, I'm going to bring my body forward as if someone's pulling me forward, so much so that my entire weight is now on top of my base of support. Then I push the floor away from me, keeping my center of gravity on top of my base of support in order to stand. And I'm gonna sit down again using the exact same method. I'm sticking my hips back, chest forward. I'm keeping my center of gravity on top of my base of support at all times to then sit. So I don't want to see anybody do this and then try to pull themselves up. And I also don't want to see anybody do this where they're, where they're sticking the back of their legs on the chair to then try to stand up. And we also want to avoid this one, two, and three to stand up. We wanna to try to go nice and slow and see if we can use our muscle control and, and, and our ability to keep our center of gravity on top of the base of support in order to stand. So you have two choices today. You can either do the normal sit to stand like I just mentioned. So this is for you if you're new today or if you've been with us for a number of weeks and you want a bit of challenge, you're welcome to bring one leg a little further forward. So we're kind of biasing 
our back leg here. You're using that leg more. So we can then do the same thing. This is our base of support. So we're going to bring our weight forward over our base of support, pushing ourselves up. And you can see my front leg is very lightly on the floor. So it's almost like I'm doing a single leg, which you can do as well. If you prefer to just take that leg off the floor, you're welcome to do that as well. If you are doing the single leg or the single leg bias version, you're doing three on one side and you switch to three on the other side, or you can stick with the normal sit to stand where we have both feet onto the floor. Whatever works for you, but join me here if you haven't already. And we're gonna do some of these sit to stands, nice and slow, nice and controlled. It's almost harder to do it slower because you're needing to use more muscle strength to kind of control that movement versus using momentum to kind of swing yourself up. So remember you can do either version, either both feet on the floor or you can do the single leg bias if you would like. We don't have too many new folks joining us today, but we do have some. So I'm gonna to stick to doing the original sit to stand. So that way you can follow if you are new to the class. So we're working on keeping our center of gravity on top of our base of support because essentially that's how we stay balanced as we move through daily life. So as we're moving, our base of support is always moving because our feet are always moving and changing directions. And it's our ability to keep our center of gravity on top of our base of support at all times in order to not fall over. So it's being able to kind of coordinate that. Um, of course, balance is a little more complicated than that, but in a nutshell, that's sort of what we're working towards is trying to get your center of gravity to be able to catch up to your base of support and, and vice versa. Okay, let's do two more in your own time, whichever version you're doing, we're going to do two more. And on your second sit to stand, you're going to stay standing. So take your time. If you haven't finished, not to worry. On your second sit to stand, you're going to stay standing. Okay. So we are now doing the standing portion of the class. Now during this class, please do hold on to a furniture, a wall, a table, whatever you've got. If you feel a little unbalanced, you wanna be nice and safe. This is sort of our supportive standing class. So I do encourage you to hold on if you need to. If you don't need to, you don't need to hold on, but I would like you to be a little bit cautious if you're not so sure how your balance is today. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with some squats. Now, as I had mentioned last week, when we do our squats, this is very similar to when we're doing our sit to stand in the sense that even though our body is moving, we're keeping our center of gravity on top of our base of support at all times. So you can see as I'm doing the squatting motion, I'm not uh, falling back or, or uh, falling forward. I'm trying to keep my center of gravity on top of my base of support. So I'm sticking my bottom back chest forward, almost like I'm about to sit in a chair. And then I'm going to push the floor away from me, squeeze my bum cheeks together in order to stand fully. And so when you're doing the squat, I don't want it to come solely from the knees. It should be from the hips. So you can see here, if you look at the hips, I'm sticking the hip back and then I'm sticking it where I'm using those bottom muscles to help me with the squat movement. What I don't want to see is this, where we're kind of standing in one spot where we're bending those knees towards the chair because this is not the same exercise and that's not what we're going for today. So you're thinking about sticking your bottom back, you're using those hip muscles to help you with that stand. You're squeezing the bum cheeks together in order to stand up nice and tall. So join me here if you haven't already. We're just gonna do the squatting a couple of times. I'm just gonna move away from my wall here so you can see me. And you can see that I've got a chair in front of me to hold on to. If you need, you don't have to, but if you need something to hold on to, please do. And if you're worried about falling backwards, it might be worthwhile doing this while there's a chair behind you, just in case when you're doing the squat, you, you kind of do this and, and, and go back. But ideally, you want to do this slowly. So we're not going as quick as we can, but we're going nice and slow, controlled, 
and really feel what I was talking about with those hip muscles. You're sticking your hips back and you're squeezing your bum cheeks together, really push the hips forward to stand back up. Keep your spine nice and long if you can. Try not to do this. I'm sure no one's actually doing it like that, but we wanna try to keep ourselves, our trunk nice and long if we can. Nicely done. And hopefully we're not gripping on for dear life either. We're, we're using a furniture in front of us if we need to just for some balance support, but we're not gripping on for dear life. We wanna really practice keeping our center of gravity on top of our base of support. Nicely done. On the next squat, we're going to stay down. We're gonna stay the same height. And we're just gonna lift one heel up like this. And then we're gonna lift the other heel up. And then we're gonna come back up. So exactly the same, just at the bottom of the squat, we stay where we are. Imagine you've got a book on your head and you're not moving. We're just lifting the heel up on each side. And then we stand back up, make sure you're pushing the hips forward to stand. And again, lift, lift. Good, and stand back up. Again, squatting down, keep still, same height the entire time. So we're not going, we're not going like this, right? We're not going up and down as we lift the heel, staying the same height and standing back up again. Let's go for four this time. One, two, three, four, and standing back up. Again, stay the same height. One, two, three, four, and standing back up. Let's go for six. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. Standing back up, all the way back up. Really squeeze your bum cheeks together. And again, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, stand back up. We're going for eight this time. Stay low, same height. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Push the floor away, squeeze the front cheeks to stand up tall uh, again. One more, going down for eight. Keep the same height. So we're gonna try not to do this bobbing motion. Keep yourself the same height. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and stand back up, shake those legs out. Nicely done. Okay. Standing up nice and tall, still holding onto a chair in front of you, if you like. We're going to do some donkey kicks today. So it's very similar to what we did last week, but we're kind of changing the orientation a little bit. So. We're holding on to uh, an object in front of us, whether that's a chair, uh, a table, whatever you got. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lean forward a very tiny bit. So you can see here, I'm hinging from the hips and I'm leaning forward very small. So I'm not, I'm not going like this over the top of the chair, but I'm just kind of bringing my body forward a little bit. From here, I'm going to bring one knee up like so, almost like I'm trying to get my kneecap to touch the chair. And then I'm going to push the leg back, leading the movement with my heel. So you can see my heel, this one. I'm going like this, and I'm pushing back using my heel. So I'm not going like this, right? But I'm bringing my knee up, and I'm pushing back with my heel. And then I'm going to do three pulses like this. One, two, three. And then I'm going to bring the leg back again so that my knee is touching. The chair and then we're going to repeat that bring the leg back pulsing one two three bring the leg forward again now if this is really tough you're welcome to place the foot down after each repetition so you can go knee up push the heel back pulsing for three two one and then you can put the leg back down for a second for a bit of a rest before you repeat on the same leg What's really important here is as we do this movement today, I don't want to see anybody do this. We bring the knee up and we go, and we kind of use our back and we're, we're doing this kind of movement. So I want the trunk to be really controlled. It's really important that we're doing this little bit of an incline forward 
and we're keeping our trunk there. So imagine your trunk is like a statue. Everything from the hips up cannot move. So you're like a statue. The leg comes up. You bring the leg back. You can see my trunk has not moved. So as I do this, my trunk has not moved. As I do my three pulses, my trunk has not moved. It's all coming from this part of my hip. And then I bring the leg forward. So everything from the hips up, not moving at all. So I don't wanna see this and then, and then like that. So nobody should be kind of using, flinging their backs into this movement. So try it with me. We're hinging forward a little bit at the hips. You're bring the knee up. Now you're supporting knee. You can bend it a little bit if you like. Otherwise, um, if you're finding that if you're straining the leg and, and it's just too tight at the back of that supporting thigh, you're welcome to bend that knee. So I'm hinging forward a little bit and I bring one knee up. So my knee is coming up to touch the chair. Then I'm going to kick back using my heels. I'm leading the movement with my heel, striking with the heel. Then I'm going to do three pulses, three, two, one with the leg straight. And I'm going to bring my knee back forward again and repeat, or you can put the foot down if you need. Again, lead with the heel back. Your body stays the same, pulsing three, two, one, and bring that knee forward. Don't let your body move. Keep your body where it is. Imagine everything from the hips up is like a statue. Good, knee forward again. Kick back, using your heel, leading your heel. One, two, three, leg forward, heel back. One, two, three. Make sure we're not like this with our shoulders either. Keep your shoulders away from the ears. Leave that movement with the heel when you go backwards. One, two, three. Let's do two more. Bring the leg back, pulsing for one, two, three. Move forward. Bring the leg back, pulsing one, two, three. And relax, you can shake out the legs a little bit, rub out the back of your hips a little bit if it's sore. I'm gonna turn around to the other side so you can see me. So we're gonna do the same thing now with the other leg. So exactly like before, we're hinging for just a little bit from the hips, not all the way, we're not leaning on the chair, but we're just hinging forward a little bit. We're gonna bring our leg up, so when we're reaching our kneecap to the back of the chair, then we're gonna bring the leg back, leading with the heel, and then we're pulsing for three, two, one, and bring it forward again. So just like before, our trunk stays where it is. Imagine from the, the, the hips up, everything is like a statue. So as I bring the leg back, I'm not moving. I'm, I'm not going like this. And as I pulse with the leg, I'm not going like that, right? I'm not moving my trunk. So keep your trunk still knee forward. Bring the leg back, leading with the heel, pulsing three, two, one. Bring that knee forward again. See if you can try not to touch that foot down in the middle, if you can. Even if you can only do two rounds of this before having to put the foot down in the middle, that's okay. Hopefully you're already started this exercise with me. If you haven't, please do now. Really try to control this movement. And we're not going as fast as we can, right? We're, we're controlling this movement. We're not trying to do as many as we can. We rather do less frequency of this exercise, less number of times with this exercise, but better control. If you really need to, you can put the foot down. So remember, trunk stays still. We're not moving our trunk as we're doing the three pulses or as we're bringing the leg back, leading with the heel. Two more. One, two, three. One last one. One, two, three. And shake out those legs. You can rub out the back of your hips if you need to. I'm going to turn around again. Okay, maybe let me turn on a diet. Uh, or shape. Yeah, let me go on a diagonal here so you can see. Okay, we're gonna switch legs again. Same thing with those donkey kicks, but now instead of going backwards, we're gonna go sideways. And so this is what it looks like. So I'm still holding on to something in front of me. I'll turn this way. And I'm going to 
I'm going to stand up nice and tall this time. I'm not really gonna add the lean because we're going sideways now. And so I'm gonna bring my knee up to meet the chair just like before. But this time, instead of going back leading with the heel, I'm going to lead with the outside border of my foot, this part, the outside border of my foot. I'm gonna bring the knee up and then I'm going to go out to the side, trying to bring the outside border of my foot out to the side, back in and lower if you need to, or keep your knee up. Kick to the outside and back in. And as I do this, you'll notice that I'm leaning my trunk away from the leg to help me with the balance. Because if I keep my trunk in the middle and I'm doing this, it's very difficult to, to, to bring that leg up. So you almost have to lean a little bit away from the leg in order to get some room in the hips to do that. And you bring it back in, same thing. So you're thinking the outside border of your foot, this part, the, the outer border of the foot is what you're kind of leading that movement with. So join me here if you haven't already. The outer borders of the foot is what you're aiming for. So we're not, we're not going like this, right? And we're not just going Ugh, like that, but we're controlling the movement. Like we're, it's almost like we're placing the foot in a certain, certain space in the air. So we're bringing the knee up, we're placing that foot out to the side, bring it back in. Place the foot out to the side, bring it back in. So let me face you, keep going, kind of like that. So you see my body is kind of moving away from the leg. Not a lot, I'm not, I'm not falling to the side, but I'm just leaning a little bit on a diagonal to allow some room in my hips for me to actually do this movement. And you should feel on the outside of your hips here. Keep going. Yeah. Out to the side. Maybe it looks okay when I face you. I'm going to face you again. I'm trying to find the angle that you can see me uh, without the chair sort of being in the way, but I think it's okay. So me up, out to the side. Me up, out to the side. Good. Keep going. Let's go for three more. Nice and controlled. We're not, we're not good. kicking out to the side, right? We're, we're placing the foot and bring it back in. Good. Okay, shake out those legs. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So we're bringing the knee up to, to touch the chair. Then we're going to use the outer border of the foot. We're bringing it out to the side. So we're like placing that foot in the air. And our body's leaning a little bit to the side to give us a bit more room. You can lower the leg if you need to, or you can keep it up. Out to the side, keep it up. Out to the side, make sure you're leaning a little bit, keep it up. But if you need to, you're welcome to place the foot down. Nice and controlled, you're placing the foot, bring it in. So remember, when we're doing this movement, we're, we're controlled and placing the leg. We are not going like that. I'm exaggerating, I'm sure no one's actually doing it like that, but we wanna avoid this kind of jarring motion. We want it to be nice and controlled. We're placing our leg there, placing our leg there, placing our leg there. Good, keep going. You're using the outer border of your foot as sort of the, you're leading with the outer border of the foot. And your body is leaning away a little bit from the front. My body is leaning away a little bit from the foot, so I have some room because if I stay here, oof, very difficult to, to kind of engage that side. Nicely done. You might actually feel this more in your supporting leg as well, and that's okay. You're, you're supposed to feel it on the outside of the hips a little bit, so even if you're feeling in the supporting leg, that's fine as well. It's mostly because we're leaning our body over. Keep going, let's go three more. Remember, you're placing the leg control. Two more. Last one. And relax, shake out those legs. Okay, I'm gonna move my chair out of the way now. Nicely done, everybody. Okay, so now we're going to find a wall that we can use. Now, you can see here, I've got a closet that I'm using as a wall. But ideally, when you're doing this at home, um, your, your wall or the surface you're leaning on should be blank. So ideally, no pictures hanging, nothing protruding out of the wall because you will hurt yourself. So just be a little bit careful. So 
I'm, I'm going to stand with my back facing the wall and I'm going to lean on the wall, okay? So I'm not leaning back like this per se, but I'm, but I'm making sure my hips and my shoulders, my back, they're on the wall, okay? You can have a little bit wider of a base of support if you like, just to help you with that balance and your heels don't have to touch the wall either. They can be a little bit further forward just so it's um, a, a little bit nicer for your back. Okay, so with our hips and our shoulders and our back on the wall, we're gonna bring the arms up into like a W shape, if you will, like the letter W, the alphabet letter. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to squeeze our shoulder blades together and try to press the back of the arms into the wall. So from the side, imagine I'm standing and there's a wall behind me and my arms up in this W shape. You wanna squeeze your shoulder blades together and you wanna, ugh, you wanna press the back of the arms into the wall. You're pressing the arms into the wall. And it's not just your, your elbow going into the wall, but it's the entire length of the back of the arms are going into the wall. So let's try that. Arms in that W shape, squeeze your shoulder blades together, press the entire length of the back of the arms into the wall, squeeze, 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 and relax. Again, squeeze the shoulder blades together, press the entire length of the arms into the wall. You should feel a bit of a stretch, and rest. Again, squeeze the shoulder blades together, really press into the wall, and again, press into the wall, Make sure your shoulders are away from your ears. Good, and again, squeeze the shoulder blades together, really press the arms into the wall. Ideally, you want the hips to still be on the wall. What I don't wanna see is this, where our hips kind of uh, come off. So I don't wanna see this, uh, because then we're kind of using our lower back instead of up here. So keep your hips on the wall, and we're, we're doing this. Not this, but this. Okay, keep going. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, press the arms into the wall and rest. So keep going in your own time. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Try to get the entire length of the back of the arms onto the wall. Good, nicely done. Let's do two more. One more on the last one. You're gonna stay here, stay pressed into the wall. This time with the entire length of the back of the arms on the wall, we're gonna slide the arms a little bit. We're not going all the way up and all the way down. We're doing like a little bit of a slide, almost like you're dusting this one spot on the wall with the back of your arms. And relax for a second, drop the arms, have a rest for a second, stand up nice and tall again. Remember the hips, shoulders back on the wall. Bring the arms into that W shape again. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and press the back of the arms onto the wall. And then keeping the back of the arms onto the wall, we're gliding in this W shape. Like we're dusting the wall with the back of our arm. Just a little bit, we're not going up and down. We're keeping this W shape and we're just sliding a bit. Like we're dusting the wall with the back of our arms. And then let's relax again for a second. You can shake out those arms if you need, rest for a second. And then we're going again, arms back up to the W shape, pressing the back of your arms onto the wall. We're doing glides again, so gliding. Gliding. Like you're dusting the wall. And relax again, shake out those arms. Let's do one more. Arms up. Like we're sliding, we're, we're dusting the wall with the back of the arms. And relax. Okay, I'm gonna move sideways a tiny bit so I don't hit my wall here. So we're still standing with our back against the wall. We're gonna bring those arms up into like a T shape now. Now what we're gonna do here is we're going to bring our arms and we're gonna clap to one side or, or touch your hand with one side. And then you're coming back to the middle, same to the other side. So we're kind of rolling. So I'm, I'm keeping my back on the wall and I'm kind of rolling to one side of the wall and I'm opening rolling to the other side of the wall. And you'll notice that my leg kind of turns in a little bit. You see that? My, my leg turns in. And that's what you're aiming for because it'd be very difficult to just do this with your legs on the spot. So you kind of want your leg to turn in as well. 
So you're kind of, it's like you're lying down in bed and you're rolling from side to side. You're rolling onto one shoulder and open, rolling onto the other shoulder and open. Oops, I need to move over a little bit more. Okay, make sure your legs are wide too, because if they're like this, very difficult. So keep your legs nice and wide. You're still leaning into the wall and you're rolling. It's like you're lying down in bed and you're rolling from side to side, rolling. Rolling. Nicely done, everybody. Remember to take your feet with you. Let's do four more. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And shake out those arms. Nicely done. Okay. Let's do a little bit of a stretch. I'm turning sideways too so you can see. You're welcome to hold on to something for this. One leg forward, one leg back. We're bending the front knee and straightening the back knee. So you should feel a stretch in the back calf muscle here. And you're trying to reach that back heel, reach the back heel to the floor and you're straightening that knee. The further apart your, your legs are, the more you'll feel the stretch. But if you're so far apart that your back heel is coming off the floor completely and you can't try to reach it to the floor anymore, then you need to shorten that, that length that you've got there. So reaching the back heel to the floor, straightening that back knee as much as you can. Just gonna hold this for a few seconds. Don't hold your breath, make sure you're breathing. Nicely done, everybody. And let's switch legs. Same thing on the other side. Bring your leg back. The front leg is bent, the back leg is straight, and you're, you're, you're straightening that back knee, reaching that back heel to the floor. If you don't feel it, separate your legs more. Or if it's too wide and you're no longer able to, to, to effectively straighten that back knee and try to reach that heel to the floor, then you'll need to shorten that step. Nicely done, everybody. Okay, come back in. Okay. We're going to do a thigh stretch. So there's two different options for doing this. You can hold on to your foot and pull it back towards your bottom. Keep the knees lined up. So don't let the knee come forward. Don't let it go out to the side. Keep the knees lined up and push those hips forward to feel a stretch at the front of the hip and the thigh. Or if you can't hold on to your leg, grab a chair behind you and you can pop the leg onto the chair. Same thing, but you'll need to make sure your knees are in line. So don't let your knee come forward. Don't let it go up to the side. Keep it in line. Push the hips forward and you'll still feel the same stretch. And the higher the chair, the more of a stretch you'll feel. Nicely done, everybody. And let's switch sides, same thing. You can either hold your foot and pull it towards your bottom, keep your knees lined up, push the hips forward, or you can place the foot onto a chair behind you if you're not able to hold onto your leg. Knees in one line, push the hips forward so you can really feel it at the front of the, of the hip and thigh. Nicely done. A few more seconds. And release. We're gonna grab our chair again. We're gonna have a sit down. So just like when we practice our sit to stand, when we go from stand to sitting, we're going to control the movement, keep our center of gravity on top of our base of support to sit. So we're not like oh, falling back into the chair, but you wanna keep yourself controlled as you lower down into the seat. And once you're sitting, we're going to shuffle to the very front of the chair. We're gonna do a bit of a hamstring stretch. So sitting at the front of the chair, we're gonna bring one leg forward, try to straighten that knee if you can. And some of you may already feel a stretch of the back of the thigh once you straighten that leg, and that's okay. You can just hold that position here. Or if you want a little bit more of a stretch, you can sit up nice and tall, keep your spine long if you can, and you're gonna hinge forward at the hips. And, and you're, you can try to reach the arms down the leg as far as you feel you can walk them. And then you should feel a stretch at the back of the thigh. 
So either one is fine, you can lean forward or you can just sit and not lean forward, whichever one works for you today. Make sure you're breathing as you're doing this, try to straighten that knee. And we're going to switch legs, same thing. Straighten the other leg. If you already feel the stretch here, stay here. If you need a deeper stretch, pinch forward at the hips. And come back up, okay. I'm going to turn back to face you for a second. We're going to stretch our bottom muscle. You can take one leg, hike it over your other knee. So my foot is going over my opposite knee. And then you can sit tall here and try to press that knee down to feel that stretch in the hip. And if you need a deeper stretch, you can lean forward as well. If that's too difficult, you're welcome to straighten the bottom leg. So you're kind of sliding your leg up. So if I go from the side for a second, one leg straight, the other one, you're sliding it up. As far as you feel you're able to, you should feel a stretch in the bottom muscle as well, or you can have the leg bent and hinge forward, push that knee down if you like. And release, let's do the same thing on the other side. You can either hike that leg up, press that knee down, sit tall, hinge forward, or if that's too much, straighten one leg, bring your foot across, slide it up that straight leg, and try to press that knee down, whichever one works for you. And release. We're going to clasp the hands together and you're going to pull them forward so you're rounding the shoulders like this. Rounding your back, rounding the shoulders, pull the arms forward, pull your breastbone back away from the arms. And then we're going to go in the opposite direction, pull the elbows back, stick your chest forward as far as you can. And again, arms and chest bone reaching away from each other. And pulling the elbows back, stretch your chest forward. One more. And open those arms again. And relax. Okay, that's it. You've done week six. Well done, everybody. I hope you're all doing okay. And um, that was our week six of our stretching strength and exercise series. So we've got two more classes after today. Um, I hope that was an enjoyable class and it wasn't too difficult for anybody. And there were any exercises that you want to do again and you want to practice more of, you're welcome to have a look on our YouTube channel. And um, the video from today should be uploaded in about a week's time. So by this time next week, you're welcome to have a look at the video and uh, practice any of the exercises you might have found difficult today or anything that you would like to work on a little bit more. And because these classes are quite general, and it, of course, not all the exercises will fit with everybody's body, or it might not always be what you need at this moment, and that's okay. You can have a look at our other classes as well, and um, pick and choose the ones that uh, work for you. And I'm just reading the chat box here. No problem if you have to leave early, absolutely fine. And no worries if you're not going to be here next week, no problem at all. The classes are recorded, so you can always have a look on the YouTube channel afterwards as well. Okay, thank you everybody. Thanks for joining us and um, I hope to see you next week. Thanks everybody.